my dear Mounties. So in this video, we are going to have a crash course of our syllabus and Canvas page. So put on your scuba gear and let's dive right in. <laughs> so let me move this to the side here. Now, first, we're going to look at our Canvas page. Of course, you go to the Mount Sac Canvas, you log in and check this out once you're logged in here's us oh this is so cool do you guys know where this is from if you've ever listened to chill hop by chilled cow this is the graphic from that it's the art from that it's so cool so this is us 1a this is our space check it out now we are going to access this first because I want us to first take a look at our syllabus and then we'll have our crash course of our Canvas page. So go ahead and click here to where it says syllabus and download it so that you can follow along. And there it is. All right, it's ready. There we go. So right off the bat, we have my favorite animal welcoming us all, and that is the panda. So in this first page, you have preliminary information that you need to know. Uh, my name, my email, uh, always reach out to me. I'm here to help. It's my job. <laughs> the other thing too, so officially, my office hour is Tuesdays at 2 p.m., though you can always set up an appointment with me just let me know this is my and it will be through zoom i actually provide my meeting id in the communication plan sheet that i have in the canvas page so uh, this class will be on canvas every week i will be publishing a module with corresponding work for the week alongside with videos where I will detail any information that you need to know for that week. So this first page is really just the logistical details of how our school conceptualizes our course, English 1A. The next page really is the meat and potatoes of it all. <laughs> I call it that because it's what I wrote. So check this out. Welcome to English 1A. I'm so happy to have you join our very own learning community of readers and writers. At its core, the thematic premise that undergirds our course is an attention to the human experience. As this is a composition class, the curriculum is scaffolded to link the action of writing as a social enterprise that constitutes an integral part of what we do as people Moreover, we'll explore varied aspects that contribute to the human experience. This will include things such as culture, language, politics, and relevantly, our relationship with science and technology. We'll consider how the work of writing, and more broadly speaking, composition, impel these things forward. Our adventure awaits us! So, the first bit of information is something that will make you happy. You ready? You don't have to buy a book. In fact, our guidebook is an open educational resource, an OER, and it's completely free. Here's the link for it. You just copy it and paste it into the browser. Let's look at it together. So even though I will, be my, I will do my best to create a class where I cover as much as we can uh, throughout uh, our lessons together. Uh, we actually also have this here, so even though I'm creating that, but we also have this supplemental piece of help here. And um, really what it is is that it's, it's a page with a lot of nuts and bolts and things that you might encounter, like some questions that you might come across uh, 
things such as such as for example success skills you know habits for success critical thinking time management so it, it has very practical bits um some more on grammar even though we are going to look at grammar um, but here's some more on that uh, things like the writing process which in this class will be very big on uh, really demonstrating how indeed writing is a process and everything we're going to do is going to uh, emulate the writing process so take a look at this so if you ever have any questions then you can just come here to this our open educational resource and click it and check it out so that is that that's the first bit of good news <laughs> now there actually is an extra credit opportunity and this is where if you want to do the extra credit which will be due by the end of the semester then you do have to obtain this book which is called the power of habit by charles duhigg it looks like this it has this yellow cover so again uh, that is going to be an extra credit essay where since our theme for this class is the human experience what is more human than habits and habit formation so what the opportunity will be is that you will write an essay where you write on what it is that you learned about just how we create habits and how habit formation works um, so what is it that you learn from this book and then what you're going to do is that you're going to select either a positive habit that you wish to adopt or a negative one that you want to get rid of uh, and then how will you use what you learn from this book to accomplish that objective so that's going to be an extra credit essay that will be due at the end of the semester it will be worth 60 extra credit points so again in the grade book i'll set it to zero uh, but it, because it's extra credit it'll be one of those things where if you do it it's going to help you if you don't do it nothing's going to happen so it'll be because it'll be set to zero but if you do want to do it uh, pick up this book either from the library or uh, Go to the bookstore and pick it up uh, and start reading it ASAP. All right, so let's continue. For materials, obviously this is an online class, so you do need to have online access. Uh, access to your Canvas account, that one is crucial since we're gonna do everything on Canvas and some highlighters. Highlighters, Mr. Godoy, why on earth will we need that? Well. The thing is, to be an active reader, you have to mark up your text. You have to, as you're reading, um, underline things that really catch your eye, get your attention, uh, important points, and also write marginal comments on the side. So these books are yours. Um, well, unless you... <laughs> unless you are maybe borrowing it but it, it, you know the thing with college books is that you're always allowed to mark them up that's how it works so anyways get some highlighters so that you could be an active reader uh, as opposed to a passive one what's the difference well the passive one just reads and doesn't engage or react or respond to what they're reading it just goes in through one ear and out through the other but when you're an active reader you are reacting to, responding to, making connections, and marking your text up, right? Okay, so uh, this next part, our online space. So as an online class, something that we have to remember is called netiquette. What is netiquette? Netiquette is net etiquette. So it's actually easy to forget that whenever we're communicating with someone and we just see like an avatar or their username or their name as we'll see in this class uh, it's easy to f forget that this is an actual person a real life person so remember remember the human that's that's the main thing to take from this from to get netiquette remember the human there's a person that you're communicating with and with that being said be respectful of one another now, it's completely normal to disagree um, with a point or an idea of a person, but 
don't attack the person directly. Just it's their idea that you're taking contention with, and that's valid. It's part of living in a society. So that goes just as much as from uh, the configuration of student to student to that of student to teacher. So same thing, uh, I'm your instructor, uh, Professor Godoy, uh, and as such, remember, you know, I'm not your homie, I'm not your, uh, I don't know, squad member, or whatever it is you want to say, but uh, so that goes just as much to me as to your other teachers, so extend the same respect uh, that you extend to one another. And another thing too, should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway, when you're writing a correspondence, whether an email or a Canvas message, <laughs> make sure to, at the very least, run a spell check. That's important. All right, class components, it's a composition class. So obviously there will be reading and writing that goes hand in hand. And to keep you on your toes for the readings, uh, we will be having um, frequent low stakes uh, quizzes throughout the term. Uh, it's really not gonna be a huge deal, there'll be five points but it'll be like if you did the reading then it'll be on comprehension and you'll do good and i will intersperse those uh, throughout our modules and speaking of modules <laughs> what's a module mr godoy well simply put a module is just uh it's a space that will contain everything that we will do for that given week so for example Right now, this is week one, and that means you'll be responsible for module one, right? We have 16 weeks in our semester, so we'll have 16 modules. And in order to make things more simple, I will be publishing uh, every module, typically on Sundays, um, and I'm going to publish it one by one. So basically, all you have to remember is that you have to do the most recently published module and the number of the module will correspond to that week so because this is week one then you'll be responsible for module one right and what's going to go inside this module you'll be you might be wondering well that'll have everything from reading quizzes to things like discussion boards to uh, places where you'll where we'll do our peer review workshops to write-ups to anything else like that that's all going to go in the module Basically, the organizational structure of this class is really easy to follow. It's just always make sure to do the work in the most recently published module. That's it. And I'll be publishing it one at a time, typically on Sundays. And interestingly enough, too, most things in the module will be due Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Why 11.59 p.m.? Well, because that's officially when the day ends. Um, so unless stated otherwise, most things will have that deadline. So let's say there was work due for this module, which actually there is, uh, then uh, usually you'll see it uh, be due for the next Sunday. Okay, so another thing to note. Now, it's very easy to lose the thread and drop the ball, or maybe some weeks are more difficult than others. Um, but unfortunately, it's not possible to make up an entire module because an entire module contains the whole of the work for the week. Um, it's your job to complete those modules on time. However, we do have something called a homework pass and a late essay pass. Let me see. Oops. <laughs> I'm looking for that section there. Do, do, do. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we have a late homework pass that allows you to turn in uh, your an homework assignment up to one day after its original deadline. So what will be part of this homework assignment? Uh, what's gonna fit into it? Well, that's everything from worksheets to write-ups to outlines to brainstorms. Uh, to current events. Some things that do not uh, apply to the homework would be peer review workshops. I'll tell you what those are. Uh, for every essay, we're going to have a workshop because that's an important part of the writing process. The reason you can't use the late paper, the late homework pass on the 
on the peer review workshop is because you need to turn that in on time because Canvas is programmed to take um, everything that it receives by its deadline. So, and then after that, it's going to automatically distribute drafts for those uh, individuals that submitted a draft in on time. So you have to get it in by the deadline. Uh, so you can't use the late homework pass for that. Nor can you use it for the discussion boards. That is because the discussion boards happen in real time. So once the deadline passes for the discussion board, then that happens, then that means that that conversation is over, right? There's no way that you would be able to reply or, or respond to one another because the conversation's ended. So just remember that um, you can use late homework pass for everything else except for peer review workshops and discussion boards. And you can turn that in up to one day after its original deadline. Uh, so let's say there was a current event due tonight, for example, by 59 p.m. Then you would just shoot me an email, say, hey, Mr. Godoy, uh, you know, I had a tough week. I actually want to use my late homework pass on current event one. And you would just have to email me as an attachment by tomorrow by 59 p.m., right? Uh, the other thing that we have, the late essay pass. So uh, we're going to have four essays this semester, uh, four main essays. You can use the late essay pass on any of the first three, not the last one. The reason why you can't use it for the last one is because the last one is due on our very last, <laughs> the last time that uh, we actually have any work done, uh, any work due. So for us, our semester is officially over June 9 by 11 59 p.m. So that's when the last assignment, this research paper, will be due. And <laughs> if you want to use, if you try to use your late essay pass on this last paper, I will dub thee the king or queen of procrastinators because it's everything's over already. So you can use it for any of the first three but not the last one. All right. Uh, and so yeah, if you choose to use it for any of those first three, then you will have uh, two days, a two day extension. Uh, so let's say there was an essay due today. Uh, today is Monday that I'm recording this. So then you would have until Wednesday by like 59 p.m. to send me it as an attachment, right? And uh, whether you choose to use uh, either the late homework pass or the late essay pass, there's no point deductions. Um, now, let's say you've used up your late essay pass on the first essay. And so, but for the second one, you, the second essay, you email me your final draft two days late. Well, unfortunately, since you've already used your late essay pass, then I'll have to deduct 10% for each day late. Uh, if you've already used the past. So I have a big tip for you, my friends. Don't use the late passes just because you have them. Like, don't just use them right at the start. Like, oh, I'll just use it just because I have it. Because what's going to happen is that <laughs> there's going to be a time when maybe it's going to be more busy at home or more busy at work. And then you'll really need the pass. And you'll you'll facepalm. You'll be like, why did I use it at the start? just because so save it until you really really need it okay all right so that is that one let's return to where we were we were talking about uh, what it makes up the modules right the discussion boards uh, actually no we were we were at the part where we were saying that you can't make up the entire module that's right that's where we were okay so yeah, even though you can't make up an entire module, but you can indeed make up individual uh, late uh, homework if you use the late homework pass or uh, late essays if you use the late essay pass, all right? So when we have discussion boards as part of our modules, it's disingenuous to call it a discussion board if there's no opportunity to correspond with one another, right? <laughs> uh, with that in mind, uh, it's for that reason that uh, there's also going to be a requirement for you to reply to at least one classmate's post alongside your response to this discussion board. Now, don't worry, I will remind you in the discussion board directions. So just bear that in mind. 
Oh, and another thing too, when you do post your discussion board response, make sure to make it at least a meaty paragraph, which is to say at least four meaty sentences. And for the reply to a classmate, at least two meaty sentences. And don't just say something like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and no, it's a conversation that you want to impel and push forward. Just like when you see your friends, like, hey, did you catch the Super Bowl? <gasps> Wasn't that amazing? Uh, and then you'll say, yeah, did you catch that play in the second quarter? I don't know, <laughs> you tell me. So you're moving the conversation forward because by just saying, yeah, that's cool, that shuts it down. So the idea is to push it forward. Okay, current events, that's another type of assignment that we'll be doing this semester. And I will go into further detail uh, once we actually come across our first current event. However, if you want to preview what that's going to be, uh, then you can take a look at this, but I'll, I'll cover it in greater detail once we actually hit our first one, which will be April 3. All right, we have four essays. I mentioned that. You have to do them all to pass the class because <laughs> it is a writing composition class, right? All right, I talked about the extra credit opportunity. Get this book if you wish to do it. Pick it up and start reading it ASAP. Okay, so something else that you need to know. Uh, this is FYI for your info. So when you submit uh, your assignment, let's uh, I don't know. Let's say it's let's say it's your first essay. Then I'm just letting you know that I have automatically programmed it so that there's a filter that where your assignment will go through turn it in uh, what's turn it in well turn it in is a program that helps us teachers uh, detect for plagiarism uh, plagiarism is when you uh, pass off things that are not your own without citing them right in this class uh, english 1a one of the big things that we are going to focus on is the importance of citation, right? And giving credit where credit is due. That's a super important part in academic writing. So um, first of all, you do not have to make an account for Trinidadian.com. It's just a filter that I will uh, that I will integrate into the assignment link. So there's nothing you have to do there. Uh, just know it's, it's on our side, <laughs> essentially, guys. <laughs> Just do your own work, okay? It's never worth the plagiarize or just do your own work. See, I remember uh, I have a vivid example of this girl who had done so well throughout the term and then her final research um, paper, it just started sounding like a medical journal. Like It's like, wait a second, this is not how she writes at all because I had graded her work and read her work throughout the whole term. I was like, out of left field, it was like, just sounded like a medical journal. And... And sure enough, turn it in detected a lot of plagiarism, so I wasn't able to give her any credit for that. Uh, and that hit her really hard because she had been doing well, so um, she had been doing so well throughout this semester. So, lesson just do your own work, don't plagiarize. <laughs> okay, so uh, student chat. So, we have a chat room in our Canvas page, I think it's a pretty cool feature. So, um, before trying me with a question, uh, try the chat room. You could be like, hey, I was watching Mr. Godoy's video uh, on, I don't know, uh, on the, our current grammar lesson. I was a little bit confused on uh, just what a subordinate clause is. Uh, did you guys quite catch that? And then maybe someone else will come in, maybe Maria. Hey, hey, John, so subordinate clause is this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, might, might help, they might help you. So try the chat room before trying me. I'll show you where that is uh, once we tour our Canvas page, which is after this. Okay, participation and attendance. Basically, it's an online class. Log in, do the work, get in on time. You'll be participating and in attendance. So as an online class, I wanted to include this here. Uh, as Mount Sac students and as a Mount Sac community, um, we have access to their help desk, which is free tech support. There, this is their email, this is their phone number, and 
it's very helpful, right? To reach out to them if you're ever stuck or just having some sort of uh, technical issues, which does happen quite a bit <laughs> more times than we'd like to think. Uh, the other one, okay, so when you submit your assignments, please make sure to have them into one of these formats, .doc, .docx, or .pdf. If you're using Google Docs, please make sure to convert it into one of these before submitting it. The reason being is because Google Docs can be finicky in that if the sender does not give the recipient full permission, then they just won't open. And I've had so many instances where the, the GDoc file has not worked for me. So please save us all the trouble and instead just, if you're in Google Docs, just go to File, Save As, and choose one of these formats before submitting it. I talked about late work already. Revision. So, because writing is a process, writing is recursive, it's ongoing. So, um, with that principle in mind, I know that it's important that just as writers do all around the world, um, they're revising and they're fixing and they're going into their work and, and, and always seeking ways to improve it. So with that being said, uh, you'll have an opportunity to revise uh, one of your major essays, um, one of the first three, right? The reason not the last one, because it's due at the end of everything of your semester. So there will be no opportunity to revise that. But for the first three, let's say on essay two, you get a B, you want to go for that A. You've read the comments, you've even gone to the writing center, you've gotten feedback, and you know exactly uh, what areas you need to strengthen. So uh, if you choose to revise it, you could just send me an email and say, hey, Professor Godoy, I'm actually going to revise this essay. And uh, once you decide that, then you will have uh, four days after you receive your scored essay. So let's say you get your essay two back today. You have four days. So today's Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you would have until Friday about 59 p.m. to send me it as an email, your revised paper. Just let me know beforehand that you're going to revise it and just four days after you'll have uh, to email me as an attachment. All right, so that is that. We talked about plagiarism. So writing center, it's a writing class, right? <laughs> this is super, super invaluable resource. Uh, they're located here in 26B and which actually happens to be uh, building 26 is where most language arts classes are. That's where the department is too. Okay, so here is the website for the writing center. Let's go ahead and check that out. There we go. All right, <laughs> here it is, 26B writing center, very cool. So, oh look, they're hiring. If you guys like writing and uh, would like the idea of working at the writing center, then they're hiring. <laughs> Why not apply? I think that's awesome. Like, how cool would it be, like, you know, taking classes and then working on campus, working for the school? Like, it works perfectly. Um, okay, so here's the video for how um, you make the, like, the appointments and the registration, just a little bit more info on that. Um, and yeah, this is their page here. You make an appointment. Um, so you could take it some look at some of the workshops uh, for the semester. Oh, here's their calendar for that. All right, so that is the Writing Center, an invaluable resource <laughs> considering how this is uh, an English writing composition class, right? Here's a phone number. Student counseling. Oh my goodness, we have going through a difficult time, all of us worldwide. And sometimes we just need someone to talk to. Here's the info uh, for the counseling department. Or, or even maybe you have some questions on your major and your current course plan. Uh, whatever the case, uh, they're, loca they're located in 9B, which is the second floor, uh, the second floor of building 9B. Here's their phone number. And here is their website. So let's check that one out. The counseling. There we go. There is their page. All right. Oh, this is important. So uh, if you have a 
documented um, condition, whether physical, psychiatric, emotional, or medical, or a learning disability, then contact our school's access center ASAP. Um, they will help you get the necessary paperwork, which you will send to me, uh, to receive the accommodations that you require. Um, or whether you need something from them, then they're there to help. <laughs> the main thing, guys, is that, uh, you know, as students, as Mount Sac students, there's there's so much at our disposal um, as, as a Mount Sac family, right? Uh, you can even have a health center. We have so many things that we can do. So this is a big one, the access center. So uh, if you need to make arrangements, uh, reach out to them ASAP and send me the proper documentation that they'll give you. All right. Uh, the rest is just a little bit of grade breakdowns. Um, essentially, all of the points will be found in our modules. All you have to remember is just do the module for the given week, everything in it. Uh, and remember that the module will be always be the most recently published one. Uh, and that's what you'll be responsible for. And yeah, with some of the stuff in the modules, the reading quizzes, current events, here's our major essays. We'll, be have, we'll have four. And for each of those, we will follow the writing process. So everything from brainstorming and outlining to, to having our, our rough, writing our rough drafts and having our peer review workshops to the final draft. That's those. Uh, here's the extra credit. All right. <laughs> This dog is happy. This is our class dog. He's like, hey, Mr. Godot, you finished all of the logistical details here. Thanks for hanging in there too, guys. <laughs> so this will be our class dog. What do you think he looks like? To me, he looks like a Max. <laughs> I imagine his ears are quite floopy too. What do you guys think his name could be? <laughs> okay, another thing too. Uh, you can always check your grades through Canvas. I always love it when teachers would update it and allow me to check it online. Uh, so that's what I do. I do my best to just always be updating it so you can check your grades online uh, through Canvas at any time. And also, the syllabus that you'll see in Canvas will always be the most current one, the most updated one. All right, here is our calendar. Uh, we'll have to do and if I'm assigning any major thing, uh, you'll see it up here. If anything is due, you'll have a little reminder. I'll always be going through this in our in our um, weekly videos, right? So just want you to understand the organizational structure of our calendar. So at the top, if anything is due, there will be that reminder. And uh, if I'm assigning anything, then same thing. All right, that is our syllabus, my friends. And there is Max. He's like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> All right. So now let's take a little tour of our Canvas page. Um, I don't know how much experience you all have had with Canvas. Um, if you have had a lot, then just uh, bear with us. If this is your first experience with it, then uh, this will be helpful. First thing I want to show you is this. You see where it says help? Um, this has info. Um, if you have trouble with uh, Canvas or anything like that, or even uh, here with a COVID info, um, we have info there. Uh, all right. Very cool. So there's that. There's the help one. There's access to the library. Uh, the link is there. But for us, this is us here, 1A, the chilled hop art. Can't get over how cool that art is. <laughs> so at the top, um, and I've included in announcements as well, is our welcome letter, which you should have received. Welcome to 1A. Here's just uh, logistical information that you need to know, such as our start date, our end date, the course link, everything that we've covered in this video, essentially. <laughs> It's my welcome video. All right. Here's my communication plan. So uh, how it is that you can uh, communicate with me and with one another and all that jazz. So look, here's my primary school email, dgodoy1 at mountsec.edu. You can also contact me through the Canvas inbox, which 
if you'll take a look, is right here. You go to inbox. You can go to compose new message, select course. There we go. And you can just send me a message through here. Boom, there's me. Uh, I'll do my best to respond to you within 24 hours. Uh, how I will communicate and contact through you will be through the weekly videos. I'll always have videos for each module, uh, as well as through your school address, your Mount Sec address, I should say Mount Sec. You'll interact with one another through our discussion boards, our peer review workshops, our Canvas chat room. Essentially, I've crafted our class to have you continue interacting with one another. So remember, even though my official, my official, uh, my sorry, my official office hour is Tuesdays at two. Uh, you can always uh, communicate uh, any desire to uh, have a Zoom meeting outside of that. So just let me know. And uh, this is my meeting ID. All right, that is the communication plan. All right, next thing that we have, here's our syllabus. Here's the info on the writing center, which I showed you. Team building activity, this is fun, guys. So um, essentially, this will be a place, because <laughs> listen, it's a tough time for all of us. We all need some humor. We all need an opportunity to share something cool. So whether that's a GIF or a video or a cool picture, uh, this will be ongoing throughout the semester. It's not for points. It's for it's for funsies. <laughs> it's for fun. Uh, so again, if you come across something you like, uh, then share it. Um, you know, something nothing, you know, overtly crass or, or you know nudity or anything like that, or uh, overtly you know violent violent or anything. So uh, I want to show you how this goes. It's essentially like our collage. It's like our space where we add things that we think are cool or things that we've encountered. I, I want to show you. Um, first, I want to show you how to um, upload a picture. Uh, and that is going to be through my favorite type of cat, British short hair cat. And this could be our class cat. We already have our, our class dog. Uh, oh, this one looks cute. <laughs> it looks really cute. And the quality of this image is stellar, too. All right, so what you do is you grab the image and you just pull it out or essentially save it. Save it somewhere that you know where you've saved it, right? Because here, in order to um, include it here, you can just go to here, insert image, oh, upload image. There we go. And as long as you know where it is, open submit <laughs> and yeah so check this out I'm gonna put meow. <laughs> I'm your class cut give me a name all right so there's that so you just post it. So that is how you post. <laughs> it's such a cute cat. It's my favorite breed. <laughs> I'm pretty short hair. <laughs> look at those eyes. They're like marbles, huh? Okay, so now we're going to look at how to post a video. So let's pretend, I don't know, let's pretend you want to post something on hockey. LA Kings, two days ago. Okay, cool. They played the Arizona Coyotes. All right, so what you do, you go to the video that you want to share. Uh, you can go to share, you go to embed. This is important, pay attention to this. So you don't want to copy just the link for it. No, you want the embed code. So you go to embed, you underline it, you copy it. Once you have that, then you can just go here to reply. And again, insert, seeing a pattern, we're inserting, okay, so insert. And you want to go here to where it says embed. And you paste the embed code. And bam. That's how you post videos.
So this, our team building activity, will be going on uh, throughout the semester. Share pictures of your dogs, your pet iguana, your pet snake, your pet cat, your pet hamster, <laughs> or just some cool music video that you found. Or maybe your favorite band has just released a new song and you think it's so rad and you want to share it. Okay, so this will be going on throughout the semester. Okay, now, remember what I said, every week you'll have a corresponding module to complete and that will have all the work for the week. This is week one, so we have module one, right? So, let's go ahead and check that out. <clears throat> First thing, obviously, is this video, you're watching it, very good. Next thing is the icebreaker. Let's break that ice. <laughs> So um, the first task, you know, we were talking about netiquette, how it's easy to it's easy to forget that there's an actual person behind um, behind the screen, right? Oh, sorry about that. Um, now, uh, a good way to not forget is to post our picture. So please, this is part of your icebreaker assignment. So you go here. This corner if you don't have a picture yet then it will be grayed out but you go there you go to profile and you just click the picture and then you upload it so please upload your picture next thing introduce yourself tell us who you are you know you could tell us what your name is your major if you have one something you'd like to share about you something interesting about me is and anything else you'd like to share um, just like I said in my video, I'll do it. David Godoy, my major was English. Uh, something interesting about me is that I really like languages. Uh, I've been studying French and Japanese. Mm, that's currently what I've been studying. <laughs> uh, okay, is there anything else you'd like to share? Okay, so what you can do, you can either type it out. Hey guys, my name is blah, 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 blah. blah. Or, you do my favorite, which is media. So, insert. One second. Oh, media, there we go. It looks like most things are under the insert option, huh? Insert, media. Upload, record, media. So, you can go to here to record. Once you do that, whoa, it's double double me <laughs> anyways you could just start recording you can just say hey guys my name is such and such it's my first semester here at Mount Sac my major is blah 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 uh, something interesting about me is that I'm in blah, into blah 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 uh, cool to meet you all and see you all online something like that if you don't want to do video you can go to here where it says webcam do no video and this would be just for audio so <clears throat> whether you choose to type it out or to make a video or make an audio then it's all good next thing after watching this video the syllabus quiz uh, slash contract essentially it's everything that we covered from the quiz they're frequently asked questions that i get uh, take it and complete it all right what else now for this week um in terms of work we have our grammar lesson uh, we're going to lay uh, some important things you see um, in in writing I feel that content is more important but I would be shortchanging you if um, we didn't look at grammar at all uh, and, and in here we're gonna look at things that I see quite a bit things like run-on sentences we're gonna talk about clauses um, just a little crash course so hope that helps I have the instructions for um, what we're going to do for this week's discussion board uh, in the video for the grammar lesson. Uh, as you'll notice, just like I mentioned, uh, most things will be due by Sunday at 59 p.m. That falls into that pattern that I mentioned. So as you can see, these will be due by Sunday by 59 p.m. All right. Um, other than that, that concludes our... Whoa, it's blinking. It's a strobe show. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> But anyway, that concludes our syllabus slash canvas um, crash course. <laughs> With that, welcome to the class, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh.
Thanks for watching.